not a nice day on the East Puckasaw River here, folks. Just like dumping rain. It's like 7.30. Me and Ted have been awake for an hour. Hope we get the rain out. It's only just gotten worse. I want to go home. Yeah. So, basically, it's getting to the point where... It probably isn't raining as hard as it sounds, but... We can't afford the time. We're just going to have to head out there in the rain, which is kind of one of the hardest ways to get up when you don't have a tar tarp set up and just getting out of your tent into the driving rain. Let's, um... Not ideal. Let's get the rum. I don't think that's a good idea, Ted. But, you know, you might be able to talk me into it. We won't care as much about the rain. True. Oh, it's probably about 8.30. Me and Jim kind of just lay there in the tent for the last hour and a half because it's been hammering rain for... Oh geez, probably like five hours, do you think? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Probably five hours, it's just been raining non-stop, like all through the night. So we were like, oh, it feels like it's just gonna last, but we kind of waited it out and still spitting a bit, but looks like we timed it pretty well. And uh, this is one of the uh, crappier things with like a river trip where you're gonna have to do so much wading is that you can't really just like wear dry shoes all the time because as soon as you step in the water um, whether you have water shoes or not in the mornings you have to at some point put on your soaked shoes and socks usually when it's cold Ugh. a lot of trips these things will be frozen
when you're out here and it's kind of far from the water sometimes you like have to get crafty with how you wash your dishes and today I've got a little bit of boiled water left I'm using this nature scrub brush it's just moss the moss actually has natural antibacterial properties so you would think it's you know oh it's dirty or whatever but it's actually pretty good it's good for uh wiping your patoot with too So we got to improvise. A couple more times around just for good. Let's see if this works. <laughs> yep. I might rethink that and shove it in the bag before I start portaging. But for just wading up the river, that should be fine. But definitely gonna rethink the way I carry my ax from now on. So that's about it. We got uh, camp packed up, had breakfast, boats loaded. Now we start dragging back up river. Uh, it's gonna be a real drag and the challenge there is that the rocks are very slippery. When there's current, uh, the water's fairly dark too. It's hard to see 
So the, the danger is kind of falling, well definitely falling and, and potentially hurting yourself. Um, we're going to get to a small kind of pond-like section where we could probably paddle and then we just have no idea what it's going to be like upriver. It could be shallower, it could be higher than this. Um, you know, we don't know. Either way, it's, it's not going to be easy. But uh, we think that if we put our heads down, because we already got our stuff off this canyon, if we put our heads down and uh, we just go hard, that we should be able to get these boats out today. Um, but it's going to depend on water levels. It's going to depend on other challenges we might run into. Uh, whether we can, you know, pick up that creek that uh, the trap line runs beside. If we can make it a ways up that, that'll uh, take time away from portaging, which would be great and speed things up, but we might not be able to. So a few unknowns, but we'll just assess things when we get there and uh, do the best we can. Pretty good one. Keep, keep, keep. Yeah. Woo. You know, the best at uh, coming up with a drug is boring, you know? Little small. Wow, I'm floating in the canoe, I'm paddling, oh I feel weightless, pretty sweet. So this isn't all that bad, um, tracking up river, it's, it's, it's dangerous. Um, you know, that you might slip on those rocks and 
uh, you know, twisted an ankle, break an ankle kind of thing. But it's not too bad when you have the two paddles or I have a stick and a paddle as a cane and kind of the weight of the canoe behind you, it stabilizes you a bit. Um, and it's certainly a heck of a lot easier than trying to drag all of this through the woods the way we had to hike out um, when Jim got hurt or the way we just hiked in now. So uh, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with how things are going. And um, yeah, so we're just kind of enjoying our time and we're managing to catch a few little brook trout. We're thinking, hey guys, can I jump in here and paddle up or do I have to wait? Uh, you might be able to get through there. You, you probably can, but you might hit a rock. Just try it. Anyway, um, enjoying the day, you know, catching a few little brook trout. I really like that camp spot that we got last night. It was really pretty. And um, so, you know, the, the water levels are just way, way too low, unfortunately, to complete the trip. I mean, we could do it, obviously, like if, if it was a, a must, but what you're seeing us do here, we'd have to do all the way down river to the coast, except for like these little small sections. Um, and it's actually more tricky doing it down river uh, in some ways, because the canoe kind of veers off all over the, all over the place um, when the water's really low. And then there's a section down river that's like freaking 10 kilometers of this. So, uh, and the river widens, so it might be really freaking shallow. So I think this was the right call, cut our losses, and we'll just come back here when, uh, when we can. No fish in here, Ted? Huh? No fish down here? Yeah, we're just gonna float up there. I mean, if we're gonna have a shore lunch, we could beach here. Right. But I was gonna I was gonna go up and take some pass up there. Yeah, it might as well. This looks pretty good, but if we wanna fish it again, we can just stand there. Right. Not even a bite. I don't know why Ted hasn't caught anything. The last time we caught nothing here, we thought maybe in lower water it would be better, but here's there's nothing here.
doing all right. It's pretty tiring, but it's going, I think, faster really than we thought it was going to. Uh, we are moving at a pretty good clip. Um, you know, definitely we're not sure what we're going to run into upriver. We just hauled up a pretty steep little chute here and we're just in this pool. So now it's, uh, yeah, we basically just start portaging. We were hoping there'd be some fish here, but what the heck? We're catching fish downriver and then here at the base of falls, nothing. So there you go. We're going to have a little shore lunch, but we figure maybe it's better just eat a granola bar and put our heads down and keep giving her. So that's what we're going to do. Got one! Hey, Ted! <coughs> oh, <whoa>. <laughs> Man! <sighs> so I caught the fish. It came off the hook. It's the biggest one I caught yet. And then it's sliding on the hill, so I went after it and I slid into the water. And my waders are quite full of water. So, fish one, gym zero. We're just back at the falls, the first set of falls that, um, you know, in episode one, uh, Jim and I camped at. And uh, I can see our old fire pit here and stuff like that. Didn't catch any fish, um, you know, took a few casts. I would have thought there would have been some here, but caught a few coming up river. It's kind of bittersweet because it's going well. We're making it up river. It's, it is pretty tough and pretty dangerous kind of tracking your canoe up like that on these wet rocks um, you know it's very easy to slip and hurt yourself but it's a lot less arduous overall than trying to drag all that gear through the bush so um, I like the trade-off right now we're gonna have to portage up these falls but I'm feeling kind of sad that like you know the trip is sort of a failure uh, I, I still had hope that maybe we could get down river and complete the journey when we got back here, but it's just so freaking low uh, that you, we would just be dragging the canoes the whole way. And it would still be a fun adventure, but I, I don't know, we might wear a hole in the bottom of our boats and Jim's hand still isn't fully healed. So I was kind of wishful thinking, I thought maybe he could just push it, but after seeing him do a few things, I, I think it's a good idea that I, I don't pressure him to go on in that kind of a way. Um, you know, just picking up a, the bag. It's only been six weeks. It should be at least eight weeks, tended damage. And, uh, you know, then we'd also have to paddle on Lake Superior for an enormous distance. So it just doesn't work out, uh, but hopefully we'll be back to complete the river uh, next spring or at a different time or a river up in this neck of the woods. Uh, see how the cookie crumbles, but still a fun adventure. I just um, It's just a little bit bittersweet. That's for sure, you know, but that's what happens I guess when you chop your hand with an axe
Yo! Oh no. Thought I was where I thought I was, but I'm not. This way, dude. Hey, Tad, I would recommend going this way. Should have gone back down to the rock, but I don't have a choice. Well, let me pass first, then. Well, I'm almost there. Pinching my leg against the wall. Sorry. Like carrying the bags, not such a big deal, but the canoes makes a difference. are way slipperier, eh? Especially when you get a little tired and hungry. Oh. Slow down, slow down. Okay. I just can't see in the minefield. It's better if you swing right there. Yeah. Sorry. How was that? Uh, a little deep. Um, I had my canoe flipped the wrong way, so I didn't have my rope. Uh oh. So it's kind of more of a pain, but it's all right. Bye bye, little waterfall. I don't care if I never see you again. Or a big waterfall, that is. I might uh, end up whipping over the falls. Yeah. 
paddling. Wow. This is so much more fun than whatever the hell else you're doing. Is this even a canoe trip? Like, what kind of a trip is this? Yeah. I it's a canoe trip. Sort of like a backpacking trip, but you just like are floating your gear as opposed to carrying it. Right. <laughs> what a loser. Like a rap album last now I'm gonna get up to the rapid and just slam an absolute pig of a log. I'm not gonna catch a fish, that's for sure. Pretty nice really though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there's a little tributary here as well. Maybe we can see where the hell we are. Yeah. So shallow here. We're getting close to the finish and like, probably gonna do it. We don't know if we're gonna be able to track up this other little creek, but I feel like we'll try as opposed to doing the portage, but the portage on that trapper's cabin isn't a big deal either. So. kind of like lean on it yeah. like that that's how like the uh, mongolians do go skiing like, do what like, a, like pulling or like a log driver they use one pull as opposed to two he goes burling down and down the white water that's how the log he pulls my south is hard pull Craig Mack coming to the back door of back door a volunteer car those games like ping pong are strong like who Craig calls And then they just take the train. Got to come back for the camera. Honestly, uh, filming these endeavors is very challenging. Um, we've gotten to the point where we kind of sort of do it just as another chore that needs to be done. So you don't think about it as much. But uh, there was a time when you kind of felt like it took away from the, the adventure or the trip. It felt more like work, but not so much anymore. Um, depends who you're going with, you know? It can be weird if you're like trying to do it with like friends or people that don't want a camera shoved in their face. <laughs> but uh, but it's a lot of work and it's it's more, more work uh, on a canoe trip of this kind. Um, you know, especially for white water. It's uh, it's really challenging to shoot. So, anyway, we're getting better at it, I think. Getting closer. It's looking like we're gonna be able to make it out today. 
but the hard work is not over yet as we have a drag slash portage still but here's another little chunk we can paddle very welcome moment there's the kirk that's the kirk dad mm -hmm. that's not our kirk i don't think so except it looks pretty big might be our crick. Really? Oh. Is that our crick? Might be our crick. Isn't it the first one though? It's too big. No, isn't our creek like wide, like swampy? Yeah. It's probably not our crick, but the other one was so the one we stepped over. It's so right. little. That's yeah, that's what I'm thinking this is. Yeah, it probably is. Just the Except mouth it is just wider. It's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, the mouth is wider because it, sometimes it's rushing. Mm -hmm. Cricks travel through wild, more rural areas. Creeks, more common in subdivisions. Cracks travel through farm country north of Belleville. To, uh, are you stuck? Oh, nice pollen. Pulling. And then you can push and then uh, walk your hands up. That's how they're going to go. Ted's just, uh, we're approaching a crick also called a creek or a stream, a small moving body of water. I think the correct pronunciation is crick. But uh, Ted is checking it out because the trail we picked up sort of follows one of two small tributaries that come in on the right-hand side here. And um, we don't think it's this one because the volume isn't quite there. The, the one we're following is sort of larger and swampy. But it looks kind of swampy back in there. But if this is it, uh, we're gonna start making our portage out of here. Um, or we're gonna start trying to haul, you know, up this shallow tributary, which is now questionable. Then we might have to veer off, bushwhack into the woods and pick up the trail if we run out of water. But the good news is that it's like maybe four o'clock and we are about 900 meters from our vehicle. Um, so it's just through the bush this way. So we're doing pretty well. We're doing better than we thought. And it looks like we're definitely gonna make it out today unless something crazy happens, like someone chops their hand with an ax or what have you. How does it look, Ted? This is our crick. This is our crick? Yeah. Our crick. We're here. Yes. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad, eh, Ted? No. It wasn't bad at all. It was not the most fun or easy. It was fairly exhausting, but we did it. We just found our creek, our crack. Um, This right behind us here will lead us to the road. Now the trapper's trail that we found runs adjacent to this. It's a, it's maybe a bit risky to try to track our canoes up this tiny creek. But, um, <laughs> it may be, uh, maybe it's, it's pretty risky to try to track our canoes up this, but I just had a peek up there and there's a beaver dam just up there, which might raise the water level. That's what I was kind of hoping, uh, and make it doable, but. It also might make it really deep and swampy and hard and we might we might regret not just portaging on the trail, but I think we're gonna get it a go. What do you think, Jim? I f***ing yeah, bud! Woo! Get some trail mix! That's what Jim said last time he got his prostate checked. <laughs> Does it? it looks like there's a lot of water coming through it, eh? Yeah. We're just scouting this creek and deciding if we want to portage. Well, 
I mean, we're gonna have to find the trail anyways. Maybe this is the best way to get up and then, you know? This doesn't look too bad here. No, I think we just start doing it. Well, that wasn't easy, but if we'd have been bushwhacking, carrying, this might turn out to be disastrous, but I'll take the risk. Kind of hoping that there would be a beaver dam here to raise the water level on this little creek. We certainly wouldn't want to drag like that all the way up that short section. It certainly make this worthwhile as opposed to doing the portage back to the road. So looks promising so far. So even though that beaver dam made it, us have to drag up those boulders, it's holding a lot of water back. And uh, this, all this right now is what we'd have to be portaging. I'll take it. I think eventually it's gonna go to shit, though. We're gonna be dragging again or bushwhacking into the woods. It's not gonna be like this right to the mine road, but. Yeah. So it's like. This is like pretty dreamy though. This definitely isn't that other little creek. No. And <laughs> this is what this is what it looked like, right? From the trail. Uh -huh. And then, but it's. It well, I was hoping there'd be a beaver dam for this exact reason. Right. It sounds like we're close. I saw the beaver it dam. It's like the beaver dam's been there for years and that's why this creek is like. Yeah kind of as wide as it is. I saw the lodge, it looks like it's still active. Like, so maybe they just haven't built it back up. Yeah. Maybe like a couple of them got trapped, so they didn't eat all the food and they just didn't build it back up. Cause they don't maybe they just had tons of food and they're yeah. full of fat and too like, lazy. Maybe they're fat and lazy, you know? And they just say like, Fuck, I'll do it tomorrow, Bob. Bob the beaver. This is ending here. There's like a little, we're gonna have to drag up something. I'm pulling. No, like a little rapid where that contour line is. Around there anyways. Oh sh Huh. The fun, easy part is over. Now there's just a shallow boulder through and show. But it goes around this island. Do you think it gets better up there? Uh, we can go scout it out. Probably does, you know? Just bushwhack to the trail? We could bushwhack to the trail. Depends on how good the trail is. Maybe we should get out and have a look, see. Let's go up that side. What, up the left? I'm just gonna pull up here as far as I can and see if I can okay. see. It looks like it ends soon, dude. What, I, this? Yeah, this, this obstruction here. Right, I feel like it's probably better once it, because it goes around an island here. Yeah. Well, I might as well just start dragging. It looks like it opens up, it's tough to tell though. <clears throat> uh, looks like this just goes to <laughs> Ted. You wanna just go up to the trail? Potentially, yeah. Uh...
So it comes around a tight bend here and it's really shallow, almost like a rapid. And then it's narrow, but deep enough at least for a bit to paddle. Getting in and out, the canoe can be annoying. Sometimes it's best to just walk through little sections like this. Getting closer here though. Getting a bunch of little bites, but I don't know. Could be nothing, you know? I just thought it seemed kind of deep. Mm hmm. Could be just dinks. You know? Mm hmm. Got one. Oh, biggest one yet. Yeah. Oh. It's not really. A little baby. Look at the colors, though. We're probably about, I don't know, 350 meters away, but in front of us is a shallow creek or a dense, dense forest. So close but far, I suppose, but uh, we're just gonna keep, keep trudging along and eventually we'll get there. Like it almost might be easier if we're gonna portage to just carry a bag with paddles as canes and walk up the creek. Yeah. And then pull the canoe with no right. weight. Oh, it was a risk. I mean, probably would have been faster to have just portage everything I'd say, eh? At this point. Let's, uh, let's just continue this, and if we hit another spot like this, we'll just bushwhack to the trail, you know? Just have to make the best out of it, right? Yeah, no, I'm hoping this is a beaver dam. It definitely gets better where I can see it, but I can't see far. Right here, I'll tell you. It's much deeper now. Hey, dude, the trail's right here. Okay. Yeah, just jump over to the trail, bro. Look, look, Ted, here's the trail. Right. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I hear you. Well, we decided to abort this creek because it was really promising at first, but then it just kind of petered out and turned into shallow rocks. And like, it's deep right here, but there's just rocks around every corner and just taking longer so we're gonna try to bushwhack over to the trail and finish this portaging through the woods 
We were hoping we could make it up this, and I suppose we did for a good chunk of the way. In some areas, the creek's a ways away from the trail, but here it's close, so it just got crazy. We are just trashing our boat, so slow going, really hard. So we're basically going to abort and just trek into the woods and finish this uh, on foot. Um, so we're going to have to haul our gear through the bush to the trail and then get going. At least you didn't fall. I almost did. Here's our footprints, Ted. So we are back on the trail. Had to abort, dragging up that creek looked really promising at first when we walked in on the trail we kind of scouted it and thought yeah you know that doesn't look too bad so we gave it a run essentially essentially not too far after the effects of the beaver dam wore off it just became a drag over boulders very slow going slower than i'm going now so damaging our canoes I don't think this is the trail. Yeah, it is. Oh man, our footprints, these are moose tracks. Remember how we came, the trail comes really close? Near the end, this is where we are. Uh huh. Well, there's no doubt it's going the same way, but just wondering if it's exactly the same one. It's gotta be, obviously, but. Uh, you know, that's it. That there could be like, there could be like a side one close to another. Car still there. Yeah. Woo! Oh. Looks like everybody's just going home. We did it. <laughs> so is it gonna be a real doozy to get out, eh? Made it back to the road, back to the car. Just waiting for Jim, should be following up my footsteps any minute now. And uh, the retrieval mission was a success. We talked about maybe trying to head down river, but it was just way too freaking dry and it was just way too early for Jim's hand. Once he tested it out, it's just still, still, still too soon, but we got our gear and now we can use it in future trips that are up and coming. And, um, you know, it was quite the adventure. You know, they, the saying goes, uh, the adventure begins when things stop going according to plan. And uh, that's definitely what happened here this time. But uh, luckily we're all safe 
and uh, we're back in one piece and we got all our gear and I mean, you know, it was a good learning experience. Uh, these kinds of things can happen and uh, I was glad I was there with Jim for this injury and you know, it highlights the dangers of a solo trip. Um, and uh, you know, in this case, he probably still would have been okay. I mean, you know, but uh, in this case, there were a few things that were in our favor. I mean, that the fact the injury happened as early as it did was actually in our favor because we're able to get back to this road. But um, I mean, you know, it uh, it was a scary moment, but it's good to uh, it's good to have made it out. And uh, you know what a slog that was. You know, it's just when people think like. You're taking a canoe deep in it's the easiest mode of travel when you think like oh i could just walk out like you know um it is no easy feat let alone if you're hundreds of kilometers hundreds of miles and let alone this which was you know much uh shorter if it had happened much uh, uh, further on we would have had to have uh um, come up with a plan b because this road wouldn't have been accessible and I'm not sure how we would have what we would have done but we would have figured something out Anyway, um, crazy stuff. I had a fun time with Jim. It's, uh, it's bittersweet, you know, that we managed to get out and we're safe now, but it is kind of sad that we couldn't complete the adventure. Um, you know, we had some really wild white water and really rugged country and just really freaking gorgeous paddle on uh, the world's largest lake, on Lake Superior, on the most remote shore. And uh, we were gonna be getting into some really good fishing, brook trout on the river, uh, big, big lake trout, possibly salmon and, and steelhead and all kinds of stuff on Superior. So, uh, you know, it's a little sad that didn't happen, but uh, this is, this is uh, how things go. And I'm just glad, um, glad uh, that we're, we're out in one piece. Jim made the mistake of carrying his canoe. We did it! Yeah! We did it! A successful rescue mission. Oh man! I'm regretting carrying the bag over there. Yeah. Well, it was quite the day, Ted. Good job, man. Good thing we came back to the uh, trail. Cheers. We blew it. <sighs> Smooth. I'm just happy. I did an interview. I'm just like, I'm just happy we're all out here safe. And I'm like, where's Jim? Where's Jim? I'm like, he's dead. <laughs> Oh, that was a good slug of rum there. Huh, you're driving. Rizum. By the time we get the cars on the uh, roof, we'll probably be a few hours from now. Wow, we must be really drunk by the time we get the cars on the roof. <laughs> the canoes on the car. <laughs> Cheers. Good, Ew. Good mission, Ted. Ew. I don't like rum. That's actually pretty yummy. Look at this say. That was good. Oh, celebratory rum drink. One more? Throw it over here. Lamb's Navy. Yeah, it's good dark rum. It seems fitting for some reason. It's got an anchor. I feel like we're near Superior. Oh, anchors are needed there. You chugged all the chase. Sorry, I needed it. Ooh, it's good. <laughs> but like, how's it going? Hey, Get yeah. on, bud. Oh, not bad, dude. You guys got the f***ing set up, eh? No, dude, we, we didn't work out quite the way we don't. <laughs> Big battle, eh? Yeah, totally, <laughs> man, totally. All right, boys. Yeah, take it easy. Have a good one.